The more you dig into Emily Dickinson, for one, the deeper you realize the rabbit hole goes, but for two, the more you realize how robustly it is that she would uh, interpret the world, the more robustly you understand that she would explore the ideas that she explored. In today's poem, we have Emily Dickinson once again exploring what existence means, what existence is worth, and whether or not we have any say on the entire spectrum of that. Welcome to Strip Coverlet, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I'm Adrian Ford, and we are here for another poetry discussion, which will appear, of course, in two separate playlists here on the channel. Number one being the poetry discussion playlist, but number two being the Emily Dickinson playlist, a playlist of poems that is, or a playlist of videos dedicated exclusively to the greatest poet that ever was. The poem in question today, I had no cause to be awake. We've all been there, right? I am recording this poem, this poetry video in the wee hours of the morning. But this poem is not necessarily so simple. The poem in question reads as such, I had no cause to be awake. My best was gone to sleep and mourn a new politeness took, and failed to wake them up, but called the others clear, and passing their curtains by, sweet morning, when I oversleep, knock, recollect, to me. I looked at sunrise once, and then I looked at them, and wishfulness in me arose, for circumstance the same. "'Twas such an ample peace, it could not hold a sigh. "'Twas Sabbath with the bells divorced, "'twas sunset all the day. "'So choosing but a gown and taking but a prayer, "'the only raiment I should need, "'I struggled and was there. "'Woof!' Right? I'm going to read the poem one more time, but and, and we're going to go through this poem stanza by stanza, but I'm going to read it one more time, and obviously, you know, you're talking about metaphor with poetry, but the obvious thing here is to interpret awake as alive and asleep as dead. So with that in mind, awake, alive, asleep, dead— Keep, keep those in mind as we read this poem one more time. I had no cause to be awake. My best was gone to sleep, and mourn a new politeness took, and failed to wake them up. But called the others clear, and passed their curtains by. Sweet morning when I oversleep, knock recollect to me. I looked at the sunrise once, and then I looked at them, and wishfulness in me arose for circumstance the same. T'was such an ample peace, it could not hold a sigh. T'was Sabbath with the bells divorced, t'was sunset all the day. So choosing but a gown and taking but a prayer, the only raiment I should need. I struggled and was there. <clears throat> this poem, I think, goes very well, reading it hand in hand with Because I Could Not Stop for Death. So I'm going to read that now just to sort of have the two palettes in mind as we, go, as we talk through the first poem. Because I could not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. The carriage held but just ourselves and in mortality. We slowly drove, he knew no haste, and I had put away my labor and my leisure too for his civility. We passed the school where children strove at recess in the ring. We passed the fields of gazing grain, we passed the setting sun, or rather he passed us. The dews drew quivering and chill, for only gossamer, my gown, my tippet, only tool. 
we paused before a house that seemed a swelling of the ground. The roof was scarcely visible, the cornice in the ground. Since then, to centuries and yet feel shorter than the day, I first surmised the horses' heads were toward eternity. <clears throat> so we're going to go through this one, this poem, stanza by stanza, verse by verse, to really get a hold on what it is this poem is saying. I had no cause to be awake, my best was gone to sleep, and morn a new politeness took and failed them, and failed to wake them up. <clears throat> I was awake, I was alive, while my best, while the partner in this relationship. So here's an interesting thing with this poem. We can read this as a partner having died or a brother, a sister, a mother, a lover, a, a father, whatever it is that we want to put into that place of the best. It can be another person or it can be a better part of your personality. Uh, but I was alive and they could not wake up because they were dead but called the others clear and passed their curtains by, sweet morning when I oversleep, knock recollect to me. So if we interpret curtains here, it's curtains for you. We interpret this as tombs or gravestones. This becomes a stanza about going to the graveyard. And when I oversleep becomes much more ominous than waking up late. This becomes when I pass a little bit too far through that veil, when I come too close to realizing that everlasting sleep. I looked at sunrise once, and then I looked at them, and wishfulness in me arose for circumstance the same. I looked at the sunrise. Um, and it's beautiful, sure, yeah, no, it's great, that's awesome. But when I look at those other folks, those other folks behind their curtains, behind their tombstones, when I look at those people, there's a wishfulness in me that rises. There's a part of me that wishes for circumstance the same. There's a part of me that wishes I was among them instead of the other people who are alive. "'Twas such an ample peace it could not hold a sigh. "'Twas Sabbath with the bells divorced. "'Twas sunset all the day. "'That looks to be that peace so absolute. "'It looks to be something that is... "'It looks to be something that is better than this. "'And it is sunset all the day. I wished to be among them because when I envision myself in that position, it is always peaceful. And the sunset, t'was sunset all the day, the everlasting sunset. When you get to the sunset at the end of the day, if you are the type to observe sunsets, it is a moment that becomes bigger than, than it really is. It becomes as cosmic as the sunset itself. It's not the sun going down. We're revolving around the sun. It is a massive thing, and you come to contemplate the day that was. But also, so it, it, it's a time of remembrance, right? It's a time of reflection, but the sunset is also, in literary terms, something used to foreshadow death itself. The day is over. So choosing but a gown and taking but a prayer. I got dressed and I prayed. The only raiment I should need, I struggled and was there. I joined them. I joined who? Those behind the curtain. Those who were asleep. 
This is a poem about stopping. This is a poem that answers the existential question. Our speaker here without their best, their best having gone to that everlasting sleep, our speaker here gets dressed and prays. That's all she needs. That's all he needs. That prayer is said. And then our speaker struggles and joins the sleeping. It's pretty dark. That is just what you expect, I suppose, from Emily Dickinson. Wow, wow, wooey. What a heavy poem. I think you can see why I would choose Because I Could Not Stop for Death to add to this poem, because they are both poems about struggling with the concepts of the waking world, of the daily life, of the never-ending spiral in which we find ourselves. Wake up, get dressed, get something to eat, go to work, get off work, get something to eat, go home, go to sleep, wake up, get dressed, right? This, this loop in which we find ourselves. Our speaker seems to think that that is not the everlasting sunset. Our speaker seems to think that that is not the struggle in which they hope to find themselves. It seems our speaker does not hope to find themselves in any struggle at all. It seems our speaker is done with the struggle, is through with that portion of things. It seems that our speaker has lost what it was that made life worth having their best. Without their best, they are now left with what is what is left. And it's not the best. The best is gone. The usefulness to struggle is gone. And so, our speaker joins the ever after. That is all I have for this poetry discussion. If you like or appreciate what it is that I do here, hitting a like button really does help me out as it tells YouTube to share this video with other literature lovers. If you find yourself here by chance but not design, literature is the only thing I talk about on this channel. There is poetry every Monday, and I hope to have you back for the next one.